Hey there Dev Squad Vertus here and welcome back to my Unreal Engine 4 FPS tutorial series. In today's video, we are going to be finishing off our grenade system for our FPS game. Now if you take a look in the bottom right hand corner of our heads up display, you are going to notice we have a grenade indicator. We have got two different grenade types, we have got our frag grenade and we've also got our smoke grenade being displayed on there. Now as of right now, if if you press the G key or the F key to fire off the various types of grenades, it is going to do that and it is not going to have any effect on your heads up display and if you wanted to you could throw as many as you want. So what we're going to be doing is adding in a little bit of functionality to check to see whether or not the player actually has enough grenades to make this happen and if they do then it's going to throw it, if not then it's not going to do anything. We're also going to be dynamically updating our heads up display so that it is going to show the number of grenades that the player has. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive straight into it. So first things first, what we need to do is actually store the number of grenades the player has. And the way we're going to do this is by opening up our character blueprint. So open up your third person character blueprint. And then inside of here, what we're going to be doing is creating two variables, one for your smoke grenade and one for your frag grenade. So the first one is going to have the name frag grenade and then the variable type we are going to be setting this to an integer and the reason why we're setting this to an integer as opposed to a float is because we don't need to have any decimal places you either have a grenade or you don't it's as simple as that the default value we are going to be setting this to free and then what we're going to be doing is creating a second variable and we're going to be giving this the name smoke grenade and then if we go ahead and compile this, once again, the variable type needs to be integer and then the default value needs to be set to free. So once we've done that, we're going to go ahead and hit compile. Now with that done, what we now need to do is essentially link that number to the heads up display and then link it to the action that we've actually programmed for our game. So what we're going to do is open up our FBS HUD widget blueprint. And inside of here, as you can see here, we've got two pieces of text for those two different grenades. Now the top one is going to be our frag grenade and the bottom one is going to be our smoke grenade. For the text content, instead of manually putting a number in there, we are going to be creating a binding. Now with this binding, all we're going to be doing is just simply grabbing the information. So having said that, we want to cast to the third person character. And as third person character, what we want to do is get our frag grenade to start with. So get frag grenade, and then we're simply going to put that into the string. Now we're not going to worry about minimum integral digits as we just want it to display one, two, or three. We don't want it to display 01, 02, or anything like that. And that bit there is as simple as that. Object wildcard, we're going to be setting this to get player character as that is the owner of, you know, this type. With that done, we're going to hit compile and then we're going to go down to our smoke grenade and do the same thing. Create a binding and with this, all we're doing is getting that information and because it's stored in that third person character, we're casting to it so we can get the reference. And then as third person character, we are going to get our smoke grenade this time and simply place it into that return value just like that. Object wildcard is going to be get player character. Go ahead and hit compile on this and then hit play. And as you can see here, now on our heads up display, it is going to say free and free because that is the variables that we've got. Now, what we don't have at the moment is the little X part. Now, if you want to add the X part in there, what you would need to do is essentially just add a second piece of text, which I'm gonna show you how to do now. So I'm gonna set the default for both of these to two, so we have a good understanding of the space. Now, we're then going to bring in two text blocks, and these text blocks, they need to be exactly the same as what we've got here. So having said that, our anchor point needs to be the same. Anchor point is the bottom right, so we're going to anchor both of these pieces of text to the bottom right. So anchor, bottom right, bottom right. And that's good. 
Next up, what we're also going to be doing is setting our font to the same size and the same type. So as you can see here, we've got Roboto and then we're setting this to light size 15. So let's do that. Light size 15, 15 and light just like that. The default content is simply just going to say X. We don't need to create a binding for this because we are not going to be changing this at all. With that being done, all we're going to do then is just scale these up and move these next to our numbers. So what it should look like is exactly like this. If we go ahead and hit compile now, it is going to look how it did originally. We've got one piece of text which is dynamically being updated and then we have also got the X which is going to be consistent because that is always going to be on the screen. So with that being done now, what we can do is move on to the functionality of checking to see whether or not the player actually has enough grenades to be able to throw one. So once again, because all of this functionality is inside of the player character here for our smoke grenade and our frag grenade, we are going to be adding it in here. So when they press it, starting off with the frag grenade, which is the top one, we are going to be adding a branch check and the condition is going to be get frag grenade and we are going to check to see if integer is greater than one or greater than zero rather. So integer greater than, and then if it's greater than zero, they can throw it. If it's not, so if it is zero, it's not gonna do anything. And we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing on the smoke grenade as well. So branch, and then for the condition, integer greater than, so if I spell it right, integer greater than integer, the B is going to be zero and the A is going to be frag grenade or smoke grenade rather, just like that. If it's false, it's simply going to do nothing. If we go ahead and hit compile, hit play, we should still be able to use our grenades. Now we can still throw as many of them as we want. So having said that, what we would need to do is go back in here and after they throw this grenade, we are going to be taking a one, we're going to be taking away one from that number. So what we're going to do is get a reference to both frag grenade and smoke grenade. And then from frag grenade, we are going to decrement integer. Now decrement is essentially just going to take away one and then set it. So it's going to save that variable. So let's go ahead and put this into the end of our sequence for frag grenade. So frag grenade, it's going to decrement the integer with our frag grenade. Over here, what we're going to do, same thing, all we're doing is decrement integer and we're ending this off in the sequence after we have thrown it. So if we go ahead and compile this now and test it, you're going to see our system should be complete. So if I press G, Every time I press G, it is going to throw a grenade and it is going to go down to zero times. And as you can see in the bottom right hand corner of my heads up display, it now says I have no more frag grenades. And if I press G, nothing is going to happen. It is not going to throw any more. Same thing with our smoke grenade, press F and it is going to throw that smoke grenade. It's going to work perfectly. The number's going down. I've got one more I can throw. That's all good, and once it's done, that is it. Game over with our grenades. Now, there is one last thing that I wanna show you how to add, which is pretty much straightforward, and that is simply just a pickup item for picking up grenades that you know the player can use to replenish their grenade count. So what we're gonna do is simply create a blueprint class, and we're gonna set this to the type grenade, frag, grenade, pickup. Inside of here, all we're going to have is a simple static mesh with the type sphere, shape sphere. And what we're going to do is when the player overlaps this, all we're going to do is simply increase that number. So we're going to set the collision preset to overlap all, and then event over, then event graph. Inside of here, Actor event begin overlap, we're going to cast to the third person character and as third person character, if they pick it up, we are going to get, or rather we are going to increment, actually, so let's 
start off by getting a reference to the frag grenade. So get frag grenade, and then we are going to increment that integer. So we are going to be adding one to it and then setting it. And it's as simple as that. After we've done that, what we're going to do is destroy this actor to make it disappear. And that's all good. If I was to put one of these in my scene here, we can test this. So let's see if we can find our little sphere over there, run up to it, and as you can see, I've now got four frag grenades. Now, you guys can play around with the appearance of these grenades. You can use a different static mesh. You can make it smaller. Personally, I think that's a bit too big, so I'm going to set this to 0.25 by 0.25. Hit compile, and we're good to go. Now, that is our frag grenade pickup sorted. To make one for the smoke grenade, all we're doing is duplicating this, and we're going to call it smoke grenade pickup just like that. And then we are going to go in here and instead of incrementing the frag grenade, we are going to increment the smoke grenade. So get smoke grenade and feed it into our increment integer, just like that. We're going to leave the rest of the code just the way it is. So if we go ahead and put some of these in here into our scene, so let's say I go and chuck three of them over into our level just over here we are going to be able to see that we can increase our number of smoke grenades as well. So one, two, three, four, five, and we can use these. And there we go. And I can just keep on throwing these because I've got lots of them. So that is absolutely everything for this video. I hope you have enjoyed it and your smoke grenade and frag grenade system is now complete. I hope you have a lovely day, thanks for watching, and as always guys, stay awesome, keep creating, your boy Virtus, signing out. This video was made possible by my supporters on Patreon. If you want more videos like this, check out my Patreon page using the link in the description. To stay up to date on new releases, make sure you follow us on social media.